ever back. You always blow out. I always have to knock your voice down. And we're back! Because you're so loud. You calm down. You're way too loud. No, you cannot take a song uh -oh, about gay uh -oh, rights uh -oh. and make it about me and you being quiet. Listen. Yo. Can we focus? It is focus. See? We're in focus. Since... Coming back from California, I ended up in the hospital, and um, I was having a ton of pain while we were in California, and then when I got back, it got to be really, really, really severe pain, um, and I have a pretty high pain tolerance, um, so I knew something was wrong, and we ended up going to the emergency room, and they did a CT scan. And we sat there for 15 hours. Yeah, yeah it took a really long hospital vi visit. And it um, cost like $4,000. $13,000. Yeah, $13,000 yeah. for a bag of saline. We have insurance, but... Two, two things of... Uh, two things One of bag of saline, two things of morphine. Morphine. Uh, a and CT sitting, scan. We didn't even get a bed, so we were paying for it. We literally paid sign. the hospital for sitting in a hallway, so... Well, towards the end, they pushed us as the Yeah, hallway. so... It was not the best experience. I, I don't understand but why I'm, they fucking charge you so much money. Like, they're, I mean, I understand that the doctors save lives and... And, you know, nurses save lives and everything, but, like, $13,000 for for that for that experience was... Not fun. Stupid. But they found two big issues. Uh, the first that was causing me the severe pain was actually my gallbladder. I had two large gallstones. And then on top of that, when they did my CT scan, they also found that I have an extremely large kidney stone. I know I hinted at it in the last video that I have the third largest kidney stone in the world. Um, it is about five inches long and it is uh, doubled the size of my kidney from like the top view. The circumference of my kidney has increased and then also the length of my kidney. Um, it's killed off a portion of my kidney unfortunately but it's still viable enough to try to save. Um, so I ended up having to have gallbladder surgery. I had my gallbladder removed. It's time for surgery number one. I'm almost fully healed up from that and um, next week I have to go to, back to the hospital, Dartmouth Hospital, to see a specialist to get the next surgery done. It's going to be a two, well, six hour surgery and then a two overnight, two day like experience and um, on the second day they give you a CT scan to see if they oh, you got, a CT got scan. all the, that's what it's called. I thought it was called a CAT scan. Same thing. But, well, why, why do you call it a CT? Because that's what it's called. But it's called a CAT scan. Okay. Uh, <laughs> next day they do another one to, um, to look to see if they get, got all of the stone out. If they haven't, then they actually have to do a second surgery on the second day. And I have to go back under again. Um, so it's a long process and it's um, because of the virus. They're not letting me have any visitors at all. So I have to go through the entire thing alone. Um, I am going to try to vlog, but I may be on drugs, I may be passed <laughs> out, I may not be awake. This is a toss so I was, I was planning on world. I was planning on Corey filming it, but now that he can't even come in the hospital, um, I don't know how much of my experience I'll actually be able to capture on film. I might just, if I can't bring my camera in, I might just use my phone, um, so the quality of the footage won't be the best, but you can get a little bit of my experience. Um, and... Uh, so, and know why we are so late on our bus payments. Our bus, bus, uh... Our bus is paid off. No. <laughs> See why it's so long to get the bus any progress whatsoever. Because yeah. of stupid hospital stuff and Well, in general, life. just, I mean, yeah. I mean, we, I, we knew the bus was going to take us a really long time. I said from when we first got it that it was probably going to take us a year or two. I told all of the people that I worked with that Which it was really probably going to take like a year or two. Years. No, it's not going to take six years. But it is going to take a while. She's, she literally um, said and, six years and last night. I know that a lot of people who do plan to get it done in like three months to six months end up taking a year. So if we're already thinking a year or two, yeah, maybe it might be a little bit longer. But we want to do, get it done as fast as possible. But life gets in the way. And we're, we're both working full time. Well, normally I'm working full time. I'm not right now. But, um, and you know, it's it's really hard to also do construction and we don't know what the hell we're doing a lot of the time. So we have to spend all that time researching and planning <clears> and um, deciding and arguing with each other on what we are going to do. If I die, yeah, are you going to keep going with the bus? Well, yeah, because I'm going to get kicked out of your house. <laughs> 
Yeah, but you can move back in with your family. You can yeah, move back. I'll, no, I'll, no, no, no. I'll take you all my shit. With Daniel. You, you I put all my shit. You'd be like, all right, wife's gone. Now I get to go live with the pe person that I really love. Uh, <laughs> listen, it's not a crime to love a man. <laughs> he is my heterosexual life mate, okay? <laughs> and I'm heterosexual too. So, it's okay. They're like Jay and Silent Bob, except for I'm not silent. Does Daniel even watch our videos? I don't know. <laughs> I think he does. If I die, I love you. Uh, my mom gets the cats, but you can take everything else. No, I, she can have one and I can have the other one. Which one are you going to take? No, I guess I have to leave them together and that's fucked up. Probably better off with your mom anyways. My mom will spoil the hell out of them. Yeah, they're all... <laughs> she <laughs> five cats. <laughs> You're not going to die, though. Don't say that. I really don't want to think about that. Well, I don't want to lose you. It's so annoying to find another wife. <laughs> That's uh, the real reason. <laughs> you, know, you know what I'll probably do is, like, knowing my sister took so long to, like, find someone is, like, I would just go join a cult or a church where all the women are pure until they get married. And then, like, the, one, the ones that, like, are totally, like, mind-washed <laughs> so that they'll do everything they say. And I'll just go find one of them. I'm feeling like I don't like needles. Why? Because I just got stabbed two, four times. Four times. They got it. Are you nervous? Yes. Yeah. Can you tell everyone you love them? Sure. I love you. I love you too. Alright, bye. Bye. Hey guys, so as you can see, it has been um, quite a while um, since my, since that last clip. It's actually been about seven weeks. Um, I was not able to vlog as much as I originally wanted to, but um, I am going to tell you about my story. Um, if you don't have time to watch the rest of this video, because I am going to go into um, quite a bit of detail about the process and the surgery and how it went and things that happened to me and about the kidney stone in general. I didn't die. <laughs> I'm okay. And um, we are going to keep doing the bus builds. Uh, things are moving along very quickly now. I have uh, about two other videos to edit already and we're um, already making progress again this weekend. So um, best videos should be coming out um, every single Wednesday now. And then hopefully I can get a start on these minimalization videos that I've been planning um, and some of the other things that are related to our tiny living um, but aren't directly bus conversion. Um, if you're interested in my full story, stick around. We're gonna jump right into that. It has been seven weeks since my surgery and it was probably the most difficult thing I've had to go through personally. Um, it was not at all like I expected. I was hoping that it would be like the gallbladder surgery, which was fairly easy. Really difficult to go through and almost impossible for me to vlog. I think there was a few times where I could have, but for the most part, uh, I didn't, I, I was in a lot of pain um, and it was really, really difficult. Um, the first day, so this, this surgery, let me start from the beginning, um, they, right off the bat, from the clip you just saw, they had problems um, getting the IV in my arm, um, they stuck me, they actually ended up sticking me like six times, and then they stuck me even more when I was under, so I woke up, and the first thing I noticed was that I had like, it looked like track marks up and down my arm. Like I had so many holes in my arm and they had um, two IVs. There was like one here and one here. And so I couldn't move my arm because my arm had to stay straight for the IV. The second thing I noticed was that there was a cut on my face, um, which I don't know if you can see in this lighting. You can kind of still see it. Yeah, you can kind of still see it here when I get close. Um. I'm really hoping it doesn't leave a permanent scar. It's taking, like I said, it's been about seven weeks now and I can still see it, so I'm a little nervous about that. Um, and they can't explain that to me. <laughs> they basically said that um, because I was face down for the surgery, that it most likely was that um, there was too much weight on my face and it caused the skin to split. But 
they're, they don't know for sure because they said that they put pads around my face and my face was supposed to be protected, but who knows? I don't know. And then I had a bunch of tubes coming out of me. So that was to be expected. Uh, obviously having, when you have surgery, you have to have, if you don't know, you have to have drainage tubes. But the one tube that wasn't expected was um, I had to have a chest tube. And that was like right up in here. Um, and it was so, actually more like right here, I think, but um, it was so painful. <laughs> um, and so the first time I woke up, I only remember like them putting cream on my face and I'm then being, I was kind of confused. I was like, why are they touching my face? And then that's when I felt like I put my hand up there and there was a, like the cut. Um, and then I went back under. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't remember much from that first day. Um, the surgery ended up being, I think he said, a little over five hours, um, like five, five and a half hours. Everything went well as far as getting the kidney stone out. And I'll talk more about the stone in a minute because it is very unique stone. It's not like a lot of other people's stones. They ended up having to do a chest tube, which was unexpected. Um, they had to do that because while he was in the like working on the kidney my lungs started to my my chest cavity started to fill up with fluid and what that means is that then the lung kind of starts to collapse because the fluid is filling up the chest cavity and and so they put um he had to stop what he was doing call in the doctor to do um like the lung doctor or I, I don't know their technical term um who had to come in do a chest tube drain it and then he had and then he could keep going with the kidney surgery um once my lung wasn't compromised that prolonged things out and also was uh, he, it wasn't completely unexpected he said it, when in the pre like pre-surgery thing uh consultation he did say it's a very slim chance that it could happen but um it did happen so and I didn't know when he said that it could happen that it meant that I was gonna have a chest tube. Um, so that was like really unexpected. Because I was on the, under the table for so long and because it was such a complicated procedure, um, I did end up losing a lot of blood. So in the middle of the night, they did do a blood transfusion. Um, so because of that, they had to give me like extra IV fluids and all this other stuff. Um, I didn't really understand what was going on. I was still very groggy and I was still in a lot of pain and I couldn't get comfortable. I kind of remember waking up and looking up to my left and seeing like a, a bag of blood so I knew that that had happened like it was that I was getting blood but I didn't really process that until later <laughs> um, and the next day was pretty awful um, they I, I had all the tubes I had a catheter I had the chest tube so it was just um, a lot of pain and a lot of not being able to get comfortable because I had all these tubes coming out of my back so I could only lay on my right side which after 24 hours of being on my right hip my hip was starting to hurt I was getting like pressure points and I just couldn't uh, get comfortable at all um, and it was really being like in and out of sleep like they would give me painkillers and then the second because uh, I ended up having <laughs> my first surgery they gave me a little scopamine patch um, behind my ear to help with nausea because I get when I get painkillers um, and antibiotics, I throw up. Um, I did not get any painkillers or antibiotics growing up, and it wasn't until my mid 20s that I had painkillers for the first time um, and and antibiotics for the first time. And so I have a very low or high sensitivity. I have a high sensitivity to painkillers and to antibiotics because. I was not exposed to it until later in life, um, which is actually a good thing because it means they're more effective, but the bad thing is if they give me too much, I get sick. Um, and so it was difficult because um, I was sick from the antibiotics and from the uh, painkillers. And so I would throw, they'd give me a painkiller and then I'd throw it up and then I'd be in pain, but they couldn't give me another painkiller because they, you know, have to regulate it, painkillers out, um, because of addictions and everything. 
So I then started to like really feel more in pain and then they were gonna give me anti-nausea but then I threw that up and uh, it just kind of became this vicious cycle where I couldn't eat because I was throwing up, I couldn't get painkillers because I was throwing up, I couldn't take nausea medication because I was throwing up and they didn't want to give me, for some reason one of the nurses uh, during one of the shifts didn't want to give me IV nausea medication. Um, she, she was like, we don't want to give you IV nausea, you have to take a pill. Um, so I just refused it at that point. And then once the shift changed over, I asked the next person if I could get IV nausea medication and, and she said yes. So I don't know what the other lady's problem was, um, if she was too lazy or what, but, um, so then I ended up getting the nausea medication in my IV, um, which then helped, but I still wasn't able to eat. So then they were checking my freaking blood sugar every, like, it felt like every 20 minutes. It wasn't probably I think it was like every hour or every two hours um so they started pricking my fingers so I had like holes in each one of my fingers by the time I left all my fingers had been pricked multiple times um so I wasn't getting any sleep because they were waking me up every hour every other hour to prick my fingers throughout the entire day and and then I had to stay over another night which was unexpected so I ended up being there for three full days the second day I was in the hospital they first removed, they did the CT scan early on in the morning just to make sure that they got all the stone, which I mentioned before that if they hadn't gotten all the stone, I would have had to go back under. Um, so they, they did the CT scan. They found out that um, not only has they got all the stone, but also a kidney had actually gone back down to normal size in less than 24 hours. Um, so it was already starting to heal itself, already starting to go back to normal. My kidney function was already starting to return to normal. Um, so my doctor was really surprised by that. He said that for how much damage and how much um, stress that kidney was under, it was amazing how fast it bounced back. So that was one really good thing from the whole surgery is that my kidney, it's fine. Um, there's a little bit of tissue damage at the top that's permanent damage, but other than that, it's totally healthy and normal now. Um, which is really good and so after that was like that was okay checkbox uh they removed the two the drainage tubes from that area um and just patched me up so i was like patched up all the way um with sticky stuff it was awful <laughs> so many gauze pads and things and then there was tape all down my side and all across my spine from from here to th to there was all patched and then taped um, and so, like, it was so bad. There was so much glue from the tape, it was insane. Um, the third day, one of the nurses helped me kind of get some of it off, but she was like, this is gonna take you a very long time to get off your skin. Um, and it did. It took, I actually, it took three weeks for me to get all of the glue off my skin because the area was so swollen and sensitive that I couldn't scrub really hard because it was excruciatingly painful. And so um, I had to go take it off in sections um, and use like glue, anti-glue stuff. They did, she did give me one can um, of anti-glue stuff and that helped a lot, but it still took a really long time to get all the glue off. And then the chest tube came out on the third day and that's why I had to stay in the hospital an extra day because the fluid in my lung hadn't completely cleared uh, in my, not my lung, my chest cavity hadn't completely cleared out. Um, so I had to stay in um, and then they were thinking of keeping me a fourth day but I begged them <laughs> to let me go. Um, I was like, please get this out and please get me out of here. Um, because by that point my entire right side was just like, on fire from pain from being on my right side and being in this awfully uncomfortable hospital bed um and with pillows that were uncomfortable and none of my things and um so once they removed the chest tube then i could then leave uh after a couple of hours they had to do a couple of different x-rays just to make sure everything looked good um, and then they sent me home. So I left the hospital at 5 p.m. Uh, three days after my surgery. The other thing I didn't mention, I started to talk about it and then I got distracted was that scopamine patch. So I ended up having the scopamine patch on my first surgery and it went great. Um, second, this surgery, they gave me a scopamine patch but they gave me a different brand. Um, and they said it was the same thing but I've had this happen before where I'm, I'm very sensitive to what I assume are generic 
um, fillers in a lot of medications. I don't know how the scoping patches work. I'm not a medical professional. Um, so I'm not quite sure what was different between the two patches, but I had an allergic reaction to the second patch. Um, and it, it was a different brand because it, it looked different. It, um, <clears throat> Not only did it look different, it was a different size and it, it had completely different reactions. The first time was amazing, the second time, this time um, was awful. I lost my sight um, for 48 hours. Um, not completely, but like everything was like a blur. So that's the other reason I wasn't able to vlog is because like I was under, I don't remember. But then once I did wake up, I couldn't see. Um, and that was really, really difficult because I wasn't allowed to have visitors and so um, not even being able to like read or look at my phone and especially because my phone was like blowing the fuck up because everyone was like where are you why aren't you responding what's up and like I had friends checking and family checking in um, and so I could hear the phone buzzing I could hear the notifications but I couldn't actually look at them um, and eventually I had to like call one of the nurses to read my phone for me so that I could at least respond to my parents and my husband. Um, apparently they were getting updates through the nurses so it wasn't like a huge deal but like it was very stressful for me to not be able to communicate with anyone that um getting emotional I don't know I'm getting emotional it's just very not scary yeah it was kind of scary but like more stressful um than anything and um i was a little worried that it was when i mentioned that i had this like problem um with my vision they were like oh that's unusual we never know that so they called an eye doctor who did an evaluation but she didn't even give me like a diagnosis or anything she just said oh let's give it time it's probably just the patch um and so uh eventually my sight did come back it wasn't until the third day that I actually um, was able to like look at myself in the mirror and that's when I saw like the huge cut across my face and like was able to like see myself in the mirror. It just was very difficult experience. Since then I've also had this weird and if you've had surgery like let me know if you feel the same way. It's so vain. But like this is my first, these two surgeries are my first real experience of having something like medically happening with me. And I hate my scars <laughs> so much. Um, I didn't think it would matter. I, I normally don't have a ton of, like I don't like how fat I am right now, but like I usually don't have a ton of um, body negativity um, for the most part other than my weight. I, I usually am okay, but like I really don't like my scars at all. I really don't like how they look and I now have four on my stomach and four on my back. Um, and it just really irritates me. They're also not really, like they're taking forever to heal. I had no idea how long scars took to heal or how long abs took to heal. I was expecting, um, like my gallbladder surgery, like I don't have any pain from that except for the actual incisions like the, where the scars are if I touch them they still hurt and that's been three and a half months now three months yeah three months now um and back is the same way um and then my ab muscles did get damaged on the kidney surgery I don't know exactly what happened I'm um but I'm assuming that my ab muscles got damaged from the inside uh, because it was like right where the kidney is and the, like the, sur the incisions in the back here and it's the opposite side. Um, and that has taken forever to heal. I'm just now starting to feel a little bit normal. Um, but I would try to like go do something or go exercise and I, like I'd start to feel better and I'd go do something and then start to exercise or start to like help work on the bus or do other things. And, um, then it would like be excruciating pain the next day. Um, so something with my ab muscles happened, doctor couldn't explain that either, so, um, don't know what that's about, but that's finally starting to feel better. Um, so it's just been this, like, really slow healing process that I have not, I did not expect. Um, and it's been really challenging and really difficult. 
Um, as for the kidney stone itself, uh, so besides being abnormally large, it was a staghorn kidney stone. It was caused by a bacteria. I'm not remembering the name. I had a little note card and I looked somewhere. Um, but it was caused by a bacteria. So essentially, um, about 10 years ago, um, coming up on 11 years ago, I had a really severe kidney infection. Um, and I ended up going to the hospital for it and I just took regular antibiotics and then it was fine. Um, but since then I've had a lot of urinary tract infections. Um, but I have been hopping, like I've moved a lot. So I was in Georgia and then I was in Oklahoma and then we were overseas and then, um, I moved back here. And so I never had a doctor to like, flag that it was unusual to be having this many urinary tract infections um and for some women urinary tract infections are totally normal so like as far as google when i was googling things there were other women who were saying like yeah i've had your i have urinary tract infections on the regular um and so i just assumed that i was one of those women um and the uh, basically what happened is when i had that original kidney infection that's pro most likely we don't know for sure, obviously, but most likely that's when the um, kidney stones started to form. The bacteria, what was unique about my case is that usually when you have this bacteria and you have this um, situation, the bacteria stays in your um, system. Um, but what happened was my body fought off the bacteria. So I actually have antibodies to fight that bacteria now. Um, but when the stone started to form, the bacteria forms the st starts to form the stone and replicates itself and the outside actually becomes a hard shell that protects that bacteria. And so then it starts to grow from the inside. So inside the bacteria is multiplying and then the stone is growing out and then stems out from that original stone. Um, and my antibodies can't attack it because there's that protective barrier on the outside. So my body defended the rest of my system from getting even more severe kidney infections, but it didn't stop the stone from growing or expanding. So what that means is, is that um, the stone has been growing for over 10 years, which would explain why it's so big, um, and because I'm so young and I've never had any other serious health issues, it's never been questioned or raised uh, as a concern of why I was having so many um, infections. So overall, the good news about that type of stone is that um, it's not going, it's most likely not going to come back. Because I have the antibodies in my system, that means that it can protect another stone from forming. It's not completely impossible for it to happen again, but it is unlikely. The other cool thing is that because it was a bacteria, a stone, a stone caused and fed by itself, um, that means that it's not like a regular kidney stone where I have to change my whole diet. Um, obviously, because I am preconditioned to have kidney stones and they I do have a family history of kidney stones I should be drinking a lot more water obviously from here on out I have to pay closer attention to my body my health is very important this has very much been a wake-up call anyways I am extremely long-winded I have been uh, talking for well over an hour now um, this is gonna be a bitch to cut down <laughs> but I um, felt like getting it all out on camera and talking about my story and explaining like why we haven't been working on the bus and what we've been going through. It's very cathartic for me to sit down and talk about everything that I'm going through. Um, and that's always been the case. I love, um, I have a couple of friends that I can do that with and it's very, very cathartic and very helpful to um, talk about things even, even if I'm just talking to a camera and I don't know who's really gonna watch this um, or if anybody's gonna watch it, but if I can, communicate with one person kind of like what I'm going through and maybe connect them with them and and um, share an experience with them then that's what vlogging is about and that's what sharing experiences is about and um, that's why I keep doing it even when I get like five views or ten views or whatever 
So thanks so much for watching this video. It's a very long video. It's a very personal video. Um, I hope that it was maybe interesting to you or helped you in some way. Um, I'm not going to do very many of these, <laughs> obviously. Um, I am not going to have any health issues from now on. I am going to be healthy. I'm going to be awesome. Um, I'm very excited for the future and very excited for bus life. So there's going to be a lot of positive things and uplifting things that are going to be coming to this channel. So, uh, you know, but every once in a while, it's just nice to tell a personal story. Um, so thank you for watching. And uh, until next time, remember to create love and travel on. Bye. Say bye, Tagor. Mmm. <laughs> <laughs> Mmm.